All right, apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but we are going to start this video with a flex. Uh, this is Swenza. He is 344k CP, probably the highest CP that I've beaten thus far in my career. Uh, he is 44k higher than my own CP, uh, but uh, I clicked duel on accident against him, and so I was like, what the fuck? But then I won, and so I was like, what the fuck? All right, uh, let's see what happened there. Uh, by the way, he is number three in our server. Uh, there won't be any secrets here. It will be Bird who will carry the team in the first part of the game. There we go. And so everybody's just below half. And so uh, easy. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be easy for the other four to uh, take the team home. It'll be pretty obvious. And that's how I won that game. Just to show you, 50k damage for Bird. Hello everyone, so in today's video we are going to help some people build their teams. Uh, a lot of people have sent in their screenshots, it's overwhelming, uh, and there's a lot. Uh, so we are going to dedicate one whole video for that. Uh, and I just don't want to keep them waiting, I want them to use the information that they will get from me as soon as possible so that they can rank up in the familiar arena. Regardless, I still think this will be helpful to you guys. Uh, I know a lot of people who are watching just want to see how to do placing, right? Or uh, they want to know uh, which familiar can do some synergy with other familiars. So, uh, and also, like, if, if your familiars are kind of similar to um, some of the people who sent in their requests, then the advice that I would give them would be directly applicable to you as well. All right, so here we go. By the way, before we do that, uh, like, some shout outs to some people who have messaged me in in game like they whispered me saying oh hey uh, i am i am watching uh or a uh, big fan of the, uh, the the channel all right so uh some of the view uh ishval uh daddy sin x uh daddy monyo and uh princess woody uh thank you guys and uh yeah so now that we got that out of the way uh, let's get to it. All right, first I want to get to Samiq. Uh, she's actually a streamer as well on uh, Facebook, right? Uh, if you want to check her out, you can. Uh, I think Samiq search Samiq on Facebook, but uh, she's one of my uh, kingdom mates actually. So basically, she wants to know if uh, if her lineups can you know has the potential to reach uh, top thirty. So uh, she has thirty two death jellies sitting around and needs some advice as to who to give to. Right, and then uh, I would like to know if I should switch out some of my lineup, if there is a more optimized formation for uh, to use for them. All right, all right. So uh, thanks in advance. Give me his content. All right, thank you. Uh, so this is the defense and this is the offense. Um, all right, this is looking pretty similar to what I have uh, for the defense, uh, except might I would be switched out for uh, Suryu. Um, her Suryu is not that much awakened so uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll make use of might here um and this is a good formation by the way so toko in front uh although i would like bird in front as well all right since your your uh your team is very similar to mine i think i can i can do that oh uh, yeah toko bird might and with the one and shrimp paler right 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 all right so how i would do this is uh this so I'll do it like this, uh, right? A mite would be over here, and then shrimp paler would be over here at the back. Uh, the reason why I'm putting shrimp paler at the back is because there are some there are some instances where uh, a Suryu from the other team would hit someone like maybe a Toko, let's say for example. Uh, but uh, with Suryu, uh, it's an AOE, so it could hit shrimp paler. Uh, uh, if like, he's in, in this uh, position, right? So you would like to avoid that because Shrimp Paler is not that strong defensively and uh, Suryu most of the time, uh, especially if you're vying for the top 30, uh, there's Suryu, if, there are, if there's any Suryu or even a Hippocampus, could easily one hit KO a Shrimp Paler. Uh, so we would like to keep him at the back, uh, out of harm's way as, uh, as much as possible, right? Uh, the reason why we're putting Toko and Bird together because it has been very... Uh, effective in my team. We're putting Might here because uh, we don't want two melee types in the same corner, right? And since uh, Hippocampus will be here doing some CC uh, because whoever is uh, hitting Bird will be the target of uh, Hippocampus, right? Uh, for offense, huh, so you're not using Bird for offense. 
which is okay, I guess. Uh, but uh, if this is the if this is the lineup you're gonna use, I am going to put Staghorn in front, and I am going to put Might in front as well. All right, so uh, I'm gonna put Might in front, and then put Toko behind. Right, uh, I'm putting Staghorn in front because uh, he can tank. Right, uh, in in this in this lineup, you don't really have a tank. Right, and Staghorn is the only one that could tank, especially if you have him at plus 300. Do you have him at plus 300? I think so, yeah, you have him at plus 300, so uh, Staghorn can definitely tank. Might will be, since he's strong enough, I, I guess he could tank a little bit, but I'm not sure for top 30, he's probably gonna be squishy uh, in the top 30, but uh, for now, let's just see what happens. Uh, so what's gonna happen here is might gonna come here in front and then hopefully he can like you know keep uh, people in, at bay. Uh, uh, just just try to stay away from Ebon's because Ebon will definitely uh, destroy Staghorn or like you know cancel not not really cancel but delay his ability and what's gonna happen is he's going to need to uh, run a little bit before he can uh, suck people in. But uh, ideally if there's no uh, if there's no Ebon in your opponent's team, uh, this will be a perfect setup. Now, for your question of who to give your extra jellies, uh, in your team, you only have Suryu and Shrimpaler that needs a jelly because all of them are maxed out in defensive jellies. Uh, in this particular case, I would go for uh, Shrimpaler uh, because uh, Shrimpaler is a fire type, and uh, if you notice, there's a lot of water types that are ranged and can actually hit people from the back. Unlike earth types who Suryu is uh, weak against, I would give it to Shrimp Baylor because it's more likely for Shrimp Baylor to die from a Suryu or a Hippocampus than for a Suryu to die uh, because of a, uh, a, a Staghorn, right? Plus you are using Suryu as an attacker anyway. So in that particular case, you have like the option who to fight right and then like maybe play that to your strengths uh put suryu where uh he will be safe and then or, or attack an enemy without a staghorn uh, however on defense uh where you are using shrimp paler uh you don't have any control and so uh, it's better to be safe right so yeah i would give it to shrimp paler right, now let's go to sen or s3n uh so here's my current setup i can reach top 20 percent but i'm unable to attain top 10 percent to get some asteroid uh, all right, so what do you have? Uh, goodness gracious. Uh, he has a Puffu and a Tarakona. What the heck? And you're only able to reach top 20%. What the fuck? Uh, I could buy your team. <laughs> what? And you have a Molten too. It's crazy. Uh, maybe. I don't want to judge here, but maybe uh, the server that he's in has a lot of strong opponents, but... Unlikely, what, 10 per, 10 per, you can't reach 10% with these kinds of uh, familiars in your uh, arsenal. Uh, I'm also... Why are you, why are you... Ah, okay. Okay, so now I get it. Now I get why you are not able to reach top 10%. He's saving his gummies to do plus 300 to like one star and then transfer each one of them so that he gets extra CP. So, but that's going to take a long time again. And then so, this is the same thing that I did. That's why I wasn't able to reach... Uh, top 30 or top 10 for for uh, for like two weeks or three weeks because that's what I did I did not upgrade my toko because I was trying to save my gummies and then uh, to do get those extra CP which looking back I regret because right now I, I don't really care about CP anymore because with CP that's for PVE and that's for lava valley and like I don't I don't really care about them anymore right uh, that's not giving me any uh, asteroid so I, I like looking back I could have gotten like 20,000 more asteroid if I did not uh, save my uh, my jellies just so I could get like what 10,000 more CP or 15,000 I don't know but yeah uh, that, that's one of my regrets and so you saving your uh, your enhancements could be the uh, could be the reason why you are not reaching top uh, ten percent at the very least with how good your uh, familiars are. So uh, first of all, I can assure you that if you use all your gummies to the right familiars, you are definitely going to reach uh, top ten percent. Now for the team, uh, I think I want to use Puffu, 
right? Because, I mean, if your only goal is top 10%, then we can play around this one, right? So, and whatever I choose here, it's going to be top 10% sure, uh, for sure, as long as you use your jellies, all right? Uh, you, whatever, you're, whatever jellies you're uh, saving up, use them on uh, Puffu. And then the team that we're going to do here is Staghorn, Tarakona, Puffu, uh, Toko, and then Ebon, right? So Ebon will be our uh, uh, our only tank here. And since you have Ebon at uh, Awaken 3, this one is strong. And also use uh, some jellies on him as well. Uh, you can use death jellies and HP jellies only. You don't have to use attack jellies on him and definitely make him f uh, make him six star. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Puffu and Tarakona in my team, so I cannot really show you. However, maybe we can do some uh, proxy uh, here. <laughs> I mean, I'm so poor. What the fuck? I don't have any of those. Uh, so you have the staghorn. And then you have a uh, Ebon Torex. So this is how you're gonna place them, right? So Staggorn in front, Ebon Torex in front. So two tanks, right? One will be melee, so uh, Ebon will help Staghorn, right? And then you're gonna have Toko, right? And then uh, for Puffu, let's say... Uh, uh, so this is Puffu, okay? This is Puffu. <laughs> this is Puffu. And uh, uh, this... Now this is uh, Tarakona. Eh? Sorbor is Tarakona in this particular scenario. So uh, we are going to put uh, Sor uh, Tarakona here uh, behind Ebon. And then we're going to put Puffu over here. Right. So what's going to happen here is Ebon is just going to uh, tank things up. Uh, keep keep uh, your team alive. Uh, and then if there's a Staghorn uh, in the other team, which will fuck up this kind of setup... Uh, you have Ebon for uh, for safety, all right? So that's the reason why uh, Ebon is in this team. Um, then uh, after uh, Staghorn pulls everybody in, or at least four, uh, three to four uh, familiars, uh, you will have Tarakona hit uh, all of them with his uh, OP skill. And also, uh, you will have a uh, Puffu destroy all of the familiars that Staghorn pulls in. Offense or defense? Doesn't matter. That team will be strong enough. That will be an OP team for a top 10% uh, uh, rank. I mean, this is like very low expectation, right? So have some bigger dreams, my friend. <laughs> yeah, so th that's what you can do. And definitely, I can guarantee you, you can reach top 10% uh, if you use your gummies and if you use the team that I suggested. Now, as for the question, which four star rare familiar should you get? Crabbo Lantern, so you wanted to do Hippo or Crabbo Lantern, but the thing there is, uh, if you use Hippo or Crabbo Lantern, you are you need to remove one from your team, so that's gonna be Ebon, which I think would be very very important uh, in terms of uh, the placing. So I don't want to remove Ebon, and also Toko. Toko is a very OP healer, so I would rather have, uh, so I would rather have uh, Toko than. Hippo or Crabbo Lantern. So, um, yeah, so I would suggest that you just go for Staghorn instead of uh, instead of uh, those two that you're thinking of. All right, next we have Baby Dritch, who uh, looks like a hot Korean, but let's assume that's not her. <laughs> Can you help me for some combo in my familiar? All right, uh, what do you have? Um, Staghorn, Hippo, uh, Sui. All right, so that's a good base. We didn't bird. Yeah. Oh, oh, but we have staghorn. So, actually, this looks very. All right. All right. You also have a shrimp baler, right? You have a shrimp. All right. F awakened four. So you could actually copy my team. What the heck. All right. So, this is how my team looks like. I could. I could suggest this one, or if you want to use staghorn because uh, you already have staghorn as at plus three hundred. So, I know you would be hesitant. To like remove him from your team and so and then you know uh, invest jellies on others so uh, in that case then uh, if you don't want to use this which would be effective again uh, if, if you're gonna use this uh, this is how I would uh, set it up uh, like this uh, yeah, like this or like this that's how I would set it up but if you are going to use a uh, staghorn um, it's gonna be like this again uh, Normally, bird and staghorn doesn't work well together, but you know, uh, since like in your particular case, you don't really have a choice or we don't have a choice, 
then uh, I would I would do it like this, right? Maybe put hippocampus here and they'll go here at the back, All right? So yeah, this is how I would position uh, your team if uh, if you want to use that card. Next, uh, exceed. Sir, please help me in my defense. All right, so he only needs help in defense. Uh, what composition is good for my familiars? Should I play Storex A3 to my new birdie A3? Also, you have a birdie A3. So it is your defense. All right, so yeah, you, you shouldn't put Bird and Airborne like beside each other uh, in in my Ignatius account. You could make it work by putting Airborne behind Toko, right? So uh, if anything, that's what I would suggest. And then uh, I am not going to put Sorbor here because mm, Sorbor won't be effective. Unless, I mean, okay, so this is defense. So maybe you what you want to do is buy yourself some time. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Uh, if in that case you want to buy some time, I would replace Suryu with uh, Shrimp All right, so... Fine. If you wanna, if you wanna, if you just want to buy yourself some time in order to win, uh, by you know running out the clock, then all right. So I would, I would do this. I would remove that. Ebon, uh, I remove Suryu. I am going to pay. I am going to put uh, Shrimp Paler, and then uh, who is the other one? Ah, yeah, uh, Sorbor. All right. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do it like this. Um, there we go. That's the uh, that's how I would do it, or maybe no, maybe rip, yeah yeah. So this is how I'm gonna put it, and this is for defense, right? So you just want to buy some time. I think that's what you want to do, and I guess and and I guess yeah, this makes sense because you are 100% uh, F2P. So yeah, you want to make use of uh, uh, Sorbor, right? So yeah. So that's how I would position it. Uh, you didn't really ask for help in the offensive end, so yeah, uh, I'm not gonna do it. All right, now we have Ball Kalum um, or Kalum. <laughs> hey, I wanted to tell you that I love your content. All right, thank you very much. It's really informative. I am, I am F2P, but really lucky to get most of my units through summoning and hatching. Wow, wow. Yo, you have a molten. Okay. Whoa. Molten Hippo and Arachnus for a free-to-play player. Any bunny bot? Crazy! This guy is super lucky. What the heck? Alright, so yeah, you have 200 jellies not used. Why is my question? Uh, well, who should I pick as free rare familiar? And what is the best offense and defense team comp I can go for? Alright, so... So for a free-to-play player, uh, I often would suggest that you use Sorbor because he can be OP for a free-to-play player because usually free-to-play players does not have a lot of options however seeing that you are very lucky you actually have some options here so i think i'm gonna use arachnus i'm going to use hippocampus i am going to use your ouroboros because he's a good awakening uh, toko definitely and ebon because ebon will help both arachnus and hippocampus your two star uh, your two rares in this particular case, although uh, they they don't have jellies, so maybe you won't feel how strong they are. But uh, you do have some jellies saved up. Uh, put some jellies on hippo, even though like to begin with, you can just put attack jellies on hippo because uh, since you also have ebon, you probably like uh, there would be a lot of battles where hippo campus won't even be touched. However, for Arachnus, she would benefit a lot with a plus 300 but again uh, try to give out the attack first on uh, hippocampus and then uh, whatever is left give it to uh, arachnus right so um, uh, I could show you all right all right so I will show you how it should look like and the positioning however I don't have a arachnus but we will do a proxy, uh, and Arachnus will be this guy. So he, uh, this is Arachnus, all right? All right, so... Or you know what? Let's let's put both melee types in front, just so we can separate the two range types. And the reason why we're doing this is to be at least safe in case there is a Staghorn over here. If Staghorn, uh, like, pulls one of them, it's going to be on the other side. So at least it will only pull one range type from your team and then 
uh, Arachnis will be at the back because uh, he is because she is not strong enough yet in your team, and uh, her skill is very important for Hippocampus, and so we want to keep her alive, and that's why we have Ebontorex and Ouroboros over here. Uh, Ebontorex is also important because uh, when he pushes uh, people or familiars. What's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of uh, familiars from your opponents uh, compiled. And that's going to help Arachnis hit a lot more familiars and also Hippocampus hit a lot more familiars and thus do devastating damage. All right, so this is how I would do it with your particular uh, team. Uh, this is not looking like a free-to-play account at all. And so uh, kudos to you, my friend, for getting a lot of good familiars. And, and then uh, who should you get as the, as the free rare familiar? You could benefit with, an, with a staghorn. Although again, you are a free-to-play player. And uh, if you want to rank up, awakenings would be very important. And so I think I would go for Arachnes or Hippocampus. All right, next we'll do Pennywise um, and probably the last. I think we, we've done a lot. So uh, yeah, maybe the last one. Uh, hello, Sir Crow. Subscribe here from White Depot. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Question, ano po ang magandang def and attack team dito? Hindi ko sa'yo mapasa top 9%. So you can't... Ha, huh, mayroon kang tarakona. <laughs> I don't know why you're not getting to the top 10. And you also have uh, Arachnis. Are you a free-to-play player? Planning din ako kunin si Hippo. That's a rare familiar chest. Why? Normally, if you have tarakona, you're basically plowing people to get to the top 10%. This is my personal experience with my other accounts right uh it's it's really hard to beat a tarakona when like when your team is not uh set up and you're just in the uh top five percent to ten percent range usually tarakona is an easy win so if you're having a hard time with top ten percent so maybe you're not you know utilizing your team very well uh i think i'm going to do one range for melee right and this is all to help Tarakona keep doing damage. Um, so I think I'll remove Suryu. Uh, he's only at 100 uh, anyway. And then either put Ouroboros or Arachnes. Arachnes will help with the DPS and Ouroboros will help CC, which will help uh, Tarakona. So it depends on preference, I guess, but uh, this is how it would look like. So you have Ebon, you have Doko, you have a Might, right? Uh, what is your Might? Might is plus 300 with Awakening 2, so that's... Uh, it's not very good because it's only A2, but plus 300. We have no choice. Let's use him. Uh, and then a Proxy. So this is a... Uh, let's say this is... Uh, Tarakona, right? So, yeah. So this is Tarakona. You put him besi uh, behind Ebon because you want to have him hit people as soon as possible. So... Uh, with this being the uh, positioning, uh, he's kind of safe because Ebon will push uh, familiars away. And then Ouroboros is here too, um, like CC. If you're not going to use Ouroboros and you're going to use, uh, what do you call this, Arachnes instead, put Arachnes behind, the like in the middle, and then Might in front. Yeah, and then Toko here. If you're going to use Ouroboros... Uh, it's going to be like this, right? Uh, Toko will be uh, behind. And the reason why we're doing this is because uh, we want to efficient with Toko's healing. So if you have four melee types, so they're going to be all in the, you know, in the vicinity of Toko's healing. So you're healing four familiars at the same time instead of three if you are using Suryu. And Suryu does not have a CC, right? Uh, so it, it will be better if you have like more familiars helping Tarakona do more damage or help him survive so that he can do more damage. Uh, you could use a, uh, again, we could use a uh, Arachnes. It, that's just to, you know, help damage and kill people before Toko from the other team heals them. Now about the rare familiar chest. Um, uh, if you get Hippo, uh, then uh, you you are going to replace one from this team. So that's going to be counterproductive for a Tarakona, in my opinion. Uh, although Hippo does do some CC, 
but I think it would benefit you more if you just awaken your arachnids. That would be my opinion. Are you a free-to-play player? Uh, because that would matter as well. If you are a free-to-play player, definitely go for arachnids. If you are using cash, then uh, maybe you can use hippo and then you could change basically your team composition. But pretty good team uh, to get into the top 10%. So this is very much reachable with the team that I suggested. All right, so there you have it. Those are the accounts that needed some help and I hope the advice that I gave will help you reach higher ranks in the familiar arena. Now to the others or you still need some help, please use the comment section and the reason for that is twofold. One, uh, it helps the channel if you use the comment section, brings a lot more traffic. And number two, uh, I don't have Discord on my phone, right? So if I'm not in front of my computer, I won't be able to see your questions. Uh, unlike if you use the comment section, I have YouTube on my phone. So I will be able to help you out or answer your question. Thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you on the next one.